Hi. Uh, is everyone doing fine? Uh, my name is Jura Chung. Um, we're from Orchestra, a cloud software company based in South Korea. Uh, today, I'll be giving you a, a, about a 15-minute presentation about optimizing service continuity in a multi-cloud da multi data center. So to give you a background, pretty much, um, I'll be going through the table of contents later on. So this will be the table of contents. First, we'll be going through the background to give you a better context to understand the challenges that we faced and why and how we tackled those challenges. Second, uh, we'll be talking about the challenges that we actually faced, but specifically in two areas. So in Korea, a lot of customers are adopting the multi-hybrid cloud model, and they're also utilizing AI cloud to provide their services as well. And secondly, uh, because they're adopting a multi-cloud model, they're adopting VMware and OpenStack within their data centers. So they would like to uh, utilize both of their features in both pools. And then thirdly, we'll address how we actually tackle these issues. For, regarding the AI cloud, we are going to talk about SmartNix and OBS offloading. And then for regarding VMware's DRS functions and mimicking those functions within the OpenStack pool, we'll be talking about how we uh, how we were able to mimic them and pro provide them as a service through our portal. And lastly, we're going to talk about you know, future challenges that we're also facing, and specifically about active, active data center architectures. So before we get into deep uh, about the presentation, I'd like to give you a brief introduction about who we are to give you a better understanding of the context. Uh, so we're a cloud software development company based in Seoul, South Korea. We actually started in 2018 as an AI ops company, and these are the full stack of cloud solutions that we provide. Um, there's cloud solutions that we provide to deploy private cloud environments within the customer's data center. So we don't provide cloud services directly to end users, or do we have data centers, but with clients that have data centers that are willing to, you know, digital, willing to go through digital transformation and cloud adoption, we provide our cloud suit. So from the bottom, we provide the cloud infrastructure level. So OpenStack-based um, IS infrastructure, we provide that. And then you know Kubernetes native. And then in the middle, you see Orchestra CMP, which is a cloud management platform. Um, what our cloud management platform does is integrate multi-hybrid cloud models. So whether you're using VMware, Red Hat, OpenStack, or our OpenStack, or you know even in the past layer, Tanzu or OpenShift, our CMP provides an integrated management for that as well. Uh, we also provide support AWS and GCP. And under the top layer, we provide you know, data ops, dev ops, ML ops, and AI, AI ops as well. So this is just a brief context that we provided to give you a better understanding of the next slide. And so in Korea, there's a big trend of adopting multi-hybrid cloud models uh, for when they're adopting the cloud. And these data centers specifically are very big. They, are, they aren't just a single data center, but they're located in different regions, and they re require us to uh, connect them in different ways so that they're actually all you know, utilized in, the together, in, in a way together. And two specific needs and challenges are going to be talked about and mentioned today in today's presentation. And the first need and challenge we faced was the, uh, due to the increased need for AI cloud services, uh, they were requiring us to enhance network capabilities as well as CPU performance. And the second need that, and challenge we're going to talk about is you know, mimicking VMware's DRS function in the OpenStack pool. So to give you a brief introduction about the you know, very summarized architecture of one of our clients' uh, data center, uh, as you can see, they have adopted the OpenStack VMware for their private cloud. They've also adopted the HPC for the AI cloud, so high performance computing pool. And they also provide, adopted the public cloud. And all of these cloud environments are being integrated management by our CMP on the top. So first thing that you, I wanted to explain that is, is, is a you know, good context for you to know is that they want to provide the services in a uh, unified workflow. So for VMware's DRS services, they also require us to provide similar services in the OpenStack pool. So it was necessary for us to also provide those services within our portal as well. So with that, with that background, let's get into the first challenges that we faced. So uh, the first challenge that I'll be talking about is enhancing network and CPU capability for AI cloud. And um, there's many ways for you to you know, tackle this issue, but we'll be talking specifically about how we integrated SmartNix to enhance them. 
And traditional, uh, you know, in net network setups, as you can see in the diagram below, there's tap devices in between. And these tap devices with in an environment where you require high, you know, workloads data to process, it could cause tap device overheads, causing, uh, you know, bottlenecks and trafficking and high um, bottlenecks for CPU performances as well. So because of that, there are needs for us to tackle this issue to decrease tap device overheads. So why SmartNIC and what are SmartNICs? And um, before we dive in, um, kind of giving you, talking to you about what SmartNICs are and their benefits, kind of probably give you a better context of understanding why we implement the SmartNICs. So, SmartNICs are able to enhance both network and CPU capability by offloading them. They provide very various functions, so not just only network functions, but also d other functions as well. But, um, and it, it is a very common way of solving CPU and network performance enhancement. And as cloud technology is maturing, infrastructure advancement is moving towards away from traditional CPU-centric cloud infrastructure. So it needs more advancements in their different various ways. And in this context, especially in AI cloud, data centers benefit when acting as a unit of a CPU. And to do so, you, also, you need to be able to allow the CPUs and networks to be functioned in a different way in a, so that they're more you know, optimized in their best way capabilities as possible. And to just <clears throat> address these demands, a lot of companies are you know, equipping data centers with specialized hardware accelerators, such as you know, GPUs and SmartNICs and ASICs as well. But today we'll be specifically talking about SmartNICs. So SmartNICs is, you know, as many of you already know, are advanced network interface cards that offer dedicated hardware acceleration and offloading capabilities for network related tasks. Um, they handle tasks such as packet processing, encryption, um, decryptions, and all, all sorts of things. They're very, you know, you know, they're very complicated to, you know, touch with, but they're also very, you know, useful. But Today, we're gonna to talk about offloading these network tasks on the CPUs to optimize them. So this is a basic diagram and architecture of how we utilized it. So SmartNICs operate like a server inside of another server, allowing virtual machines to communicate directly without the NICs to being interrupted by the interfaces in between. So they decrease the tap device overheads and the interfaces between the kernel layer and to enable these functions, we customize the FPGA code within the SmartNIC to provide the OVS offloading and capability and the OVS DPDK capability. So uh, to talk about the OVS DPDK, OVS DPDK, as you already know, it, kinda, it allows uh, host path-through, so direct connections between virtual machines and NICs. But even if the, without the SmartNICs, if direct connection is, um, made through virtual machines and the hardware and hypervisor level, there's still great overloads within the hypervisor CPU. So to optimize the hypervisor CPU function and performance and the overall data center as a CPU performance, you require a SmartNIC so that you kind of offload the hypervisor CPU onto the SmartNIC. So the SmartNIC is actually functioning as a network optimization aspect. So that's how we provided uh, optimization for VM pass-through and direct connection with the hypervisor, the underlying physical lever, late layer. And then second is the configuration of uh, OVS to use SmartNICs to provide Neutron's functionality. So Neutron's, as you already may know, provides various network functions from east-west traffic as well as load balancing firewall as well. But so we offloaded those tasks to be performed on the SmartNIC directly. So the SmartNIC, uh, are performing the load balancing, firewalling, QoS management, TLS security as well. As well. So this kind of decreases the overall workload and uh, you know, burden of the CPU to the SmartNIC so that the CPU is more functioning to, you know, more focused in the hypervisor optimizing level. So in, this, in a similar context, um, if you look at this slide, we are talking about east-west traffic and with the rise of cloud computing, distributed computing, cloud native applications, and especially AI cloud, east-west traffic has become a very crucial point of you know, uh, challenges that you need to tackle. And <clears throat> east-west traffic, uh, in AI cloud especially, it requires high volume of data to be processed, to be transferred, and leveraging SmartNICs to offload these capabilities so that the hypervisor CPU isn't overloaded, isn't burdened too much, 
optimizes the AI cloud in this in this sense. And um, yeah, so this in this way we tackled um, the you know network enhancement capability. And this is basically a uh, you know data that we collected from you know is between an environment without the SmartNIC implemented and an environment with the SmartNIC implemented. And you can see that the network traffic optimi uh, functionality and capability has increased by about 70%. And so with this, I'll just kind of finish up and wrap up about the first challenge that we uh, challenged. And secondly, I want to talk about the, um, you know, mimicking the VMware's DRS function in the OpenStack pool. So DRS, to give you a you know, brief introduction about what it is, is a distributed resource scheduler. And it is a feature of VMware within vSphere to optimize resource utilization and workload distribution in a cluster of virtualized hosts. So it's pretty much you know, a package solution, a service of load balancing, um, server group clustering, and you know, cluster management. So con with about affinity group, you could anti-affinity group as well. So with this, you also provide you know, optimization for the administrators so that they could improve resource efficiency, overall stability and scalability as well. So this is how we tackled this issue. Um, we weren't able to you know, mimic 100% of the VMware's DRS function as itself, but we were able to mimic the functions to this level so that it could be provided as a service through our portal. So what we did was we combined with automation tools, Octavia Service, server, OpenStack Server Group, and DRBD together. So we combined them in the back end, we used automation tools to automate this whole process. So to give you an overview of the process, the so first step is, you know, when you provision a virtual machine, our OpenStack Server Group would, you know, group them together. So within different hypervisor, when you're making a virtual machine, you're provisioning it with a certain image from Glance, and you're provisioning applications as well, but is, in, is provisioned in an active standby way. So even if when a virtual machine from hypervisor one would go down, for hypervisor, the virtual machine on hypervisor two would kind of you know, go live. But the real important thing is how are, you, how are you going to synchronize the data? How are you going to provide it as an HA high availability, high availability architecture? So to do so, we linked these two virtual machines through Octavia and the VIP. So what, you know, load balancing is pretty common, you know, and basic feature, so I'll just kind of go over that. And then lastly, we synchronized the data box between the two hypervisors and virtual machines so that, oh, within the same server group, so that they're able to provide high availability. So even if one virtual machine fails due to whatever reason, you already have a synchronized data within the other virtual machine within the same server group that's clustered by the OpenStack server group. So by providing these services, we're able to provide, a, you know, mimic the same benefits that, virtual, that VMware DRS also provides. So efficient workload distribution, high, ability, high availability and failover, and customizable policies about affinity groups. And lastly, I wanna talk about um, the challenges that we're facing right now. So, uh, we not only provide cloud solutions, but we also provide technical consultancy as well. So this is an architecture that we're drawing for our, one of our clients right now to create an active, active data center environment. So you know, there's four main things that you should take into consideration when you're designing an, arch and designing and architecting an active, active data center for multiple you know, regions. So the first thing would be GSLB. So when a client is requesting a certain cloud service, you want to be able to provide the cloud service in the most optimal location and region possible. So through this GSLB, you're distributing the request to the most optimal location and optimal data center. And second is, uh, we're actually partnered with Cisco in Korea. So Cisco ACI VXLine, we're gonna use their L2 device so that we're going to connect the two data centers together. And then uh, third is GWDM. So what you want to do is, because you have to have large amounts of data to be transferred between data centers, you need to be able to expand and manage the bandwidth and con the network connection. And lastly, you want to have a storage that is able to support active, active environments. So NAS storage is one of the you know, more, um, 
storages that we find that is very flexible when you're utilizing for active active environments so that you don't have to, you know, it's, it's more continuous. Service continuity is very crucial. So you don't want to have any downtime when you're transferring the data between the data centers. So the active active data center model isn't a challenge that we have actually solved right now, but this is just one of the approaches that we're taking. And hopefully it provides some insights. If you do have any insights or opinions about this, please feel free to visit us at our booth. Um, we're more than open to talk to you about this. And if you have any questions regarding the contents that I've talked about before, please also feel free to visit us at our booth. Um, I'm not, I'm actually in marketing and sales, so I'm not super like in too deep with tech. So if you visit us, uh, our director and head of the, our technology will be there to answer your questions. So yeah, and with this, I'll end my session. Thank you for listening. Um, if you have any questions, I think my, my tech guy is here. If you have any questions that maybe we could answer. Okay, like if you're interested in anything, then please come by and stop by our booth. Thank you once again. <laughs>